I'd like to say there's a method, but there really isn't. I just, I see something I want. It's like women in shoes, I guess. Man, that's fun. <laughs> that's a fun gun. I mean, I love it. I've, I've held full-time jobs before, and I loved, I loved working those jobs, but I think my true passion is uh, firearms and guns. This has been a project of mine for quite a long time um, and I know we shot these um, the other day at the uh, shooting range but this one's just a little bit different um, even though the pictogram lower does say that it shoots single shot three round burst and full auto this is strictly just semi-auto I don't own any fully automatic weapons it's just too expensive for my college budget but and uh, this is a really fun rifle the largest caliber I've ever owned so that's 308 definitely really fun to shoot um, very loud. So this is something I picked up not too long ago. By the way, all these guns are registered in my name. I've purchased them all through um, local places in town or online and gotten them shipped to an FFL. But this is the only gun that's not registered in my name because it was actually an heirloom from my grandfather who uh, passed away a few years ago. I've decided to hold on to that. That'll be something I never sell. It's a Remington 870 shotgun. And when I say just like the one I carried in the military, this one's actually full auto. It's an M1 Garand. AR-15, semi-automatic. This is an MP5 SD. It's just a regular old MP5 SD without the suppressor. So that is another AR-15 uh, with a suppressor on it. AK-47, semi-automatic and I didn't have one, so I ran up to the Walmart and bought one. 1890 Mosin Nagant. Uzi. It's a full automatic machine gun. Ready to start on pistols? <laughs> one of the things I like about them is just the pure mechanical artistry of the weapon. Um, if you have ever really taken the time to look at a semi-automatic rifle or semi-automatic pistol, or even a revolver, and watch how all of the intricate parts work with each other, they're beautiful. And I'm going to get a few more guns as soon as I can think about which ones I want to buy. Uh, the idea of being able to hit that bullseye when you want to hit that bullseye, that's pretty impressive. It's fun. It's a, it's a hobby. And I think there's, you know, part of it, the romantic part of the whole um, freedom, you know, uh, there's, a, there's something that people say that uh, free men own weapons, slaves don't. This one is an 1822 Simeon North. It's one of the first pistols and one of the first armaments actually the United States government decided to manufacture. Uh, and then the DNA of the United States is, is formed on that independence and on that self-reliance. Uh, plus there's other things too. Uh, unlike Europe, we have vast expanses of land. We don't have cities that are just crowded all the time. We have people that have lived out in little towns that have, that have never been to a big city like a New York or a Chicago. And uh, on those areas, uh, the rifle is something that's just a tool that you keep in the truck. I'm in school right now um, at uh, Virginia Commonwealth University downtown. Um, I'm just getting my business degree, but I think I want to stay in the firearms industry because I, I feel like it's not going to be going anywhere soon. I think it's going to be just getting, getting bigger, especially in America. So I just enjoy it. You know, whether I stay here for a really long time or move on, I just definitely want to stay in the industry for sure. So this is our rental wall right here. Uh, we've got all different types of make, uh, makes and models of handguns. Definitely a fun gun. It's got the uh, light on the end. Just super iconic if you've grown up in the 80s and loved all types of movies like Die Hard and stuff. So the MP5 is really cool. So down on this section of uh, our buildings, our more retail side, we've got personal defense rounds right here that we sell, um, hollow points and things like that. If you want to purchase a gun, if it's an assault weapon, um, the ATF classifies an assault weapon as something, a rifle that's got 
A collapsible buttstock, like this one does. A pistol grip can take a detachable magazine, um, a flash hider, and a bayonet lug. Now this SBR does not have a bayonet lug, but this does have three out of the five criteria that meets the ATF's specifications for what an assault weapon is. So if it is, if you get an AR-15 online, you'll need to bring in three forms. So you could do driver's license, again, um, concealed carry permit, voter ID card, vehicle registration, and then that third form is going to be something like proof of citizenship, like a passport. And then as soon as we get that, we go online uh, to the Virginia State Police, I guess, background check system, and we enter in all that information. Mine usually come back right away, so I'll submit mine, or someone will submit mine for me uh, when I'm purchasing a gun somewhere, and mine will usually come back approved right away, and then we print out the approval form, and then they pay the transfer fee, which ours is $28, and then they can take their gun home with them. So you can usually get it that day depending. And that's in the state of Virginia. Each state's different. Some states, um, I think you might have a wait period, but in Virginia you can usually leave that day with your weapon. We've been brought up this way. You know, we've been taught you have a gun, you go hunt animals, and you feed the family. And I think if that's taken away from us as Americans, you know, we lose that sense of self almost because we've been raised to take care of our families. You know, the, the feeling you get, one, you've empowered yourself. And I think, especially for women, that's very important for us to feel that we are empowered and that we can protect ourselves. It gets us away. We get to go outside or we get to come places like this and we get to fire. And, you know, you can practice it. You can get better at it. You've got antique gun collectors that get all excited about these historical guns and pieces. So I think there's so much benefit there. Um, that a lot of people are missing out. I always thought like what I would do if I wasn't into guns. I mean, I was a musician for many years. I don't even know what I would be doing. I mean, probably maybe still music, maybe something else. Um, but I am really glad that I did find some sort of niche and I fell in love with it. So it's, it's definitely really fun. talk about the 34,000 people that die a year from gun violence. And what you really need to do is deconstruct that number. And when you look at it, 61% of those gun deaths were suicides. And so I'd ask you this, when someone hangs themselves, do you consider that rope violence? When you look at that number and break it down even further, you're going to see that people talk about accidents, because that makes all the news. When some toddler accidentally shoots somebody, or some father accidentally shoots a son, or some husband accidentally shoots a wife because she's coming in late. That is about 600 deaths a year. Again, in a country of 330 million, 600. Again, each one is tragic. But is it something to take away a right from the other 330 million?